because they're the only counter to this new operator, right? So if you had to pick like a new main, I'd probably pick those two because this new operator is absolutely insane. What's up everybody, in today's video, I'm gonna be going over the year eight season one designer's notes and probably over some stuff that you didn't realize was coming. So with that out of the way, let's get straight into the video. So first of all, let's go over what happened last season. This is the ranked PC Emerald and above attacker wind delta, which means if they're further on the right on the chart, that means that they're played more. And if they're further up on the chart, then that means that they're winning more. So for example, Yana is played a lot in like the 70 percent percentile almost and then she's winning below the one percentile in games and then you have someone like sends who's not getting played a lot at all but is still losing most games right so a pretty bad operator but that's just to give you a frame of reference so actually looking at these operators most of this makes sense right like sends is not good fuse capital monty zero is actually a bit surprising so are flores and maverick and then all of these operators on the left are also kind of dog shit so you know not much of a surprise there in terms of wind delta and then we look at operators right here like blackbeard Nook, Amaru, and Finca. Doesn't surprise me too much other than like the Blackbeard pick, but Nook is really good. Amaru with the shotgun is not too bad. Finca is not too terrible at all either. All of these operators right here don't surprise me being that they're pretty close to the center. You know, all your support ops mainly, right? And then Jackal is a little low, but not too low. And then all of these operators being over here in terms of pick rate doesn't surprise me either. Everyone's playing Yana. Everyone's playing Ace and solo queue. Ash is picked because of a G36C. And then you have Sledge, obviously, because he's a great solo queue operator. Not anything too crazy here. Then we go into the console changes. So, console has a win delta now, which is something that they didn't have before because it was hard to quantify Xbox versus PlayStation. Now, consoles are merged into one playing pool. They're all playing together because of crossplay. So now you can actually quantify who's getting played and how well they're doing, right? So, I mean, it's not too different to the PC changes, right? Sens is a lot lower. Ace and Yana are pretty high, as well as Ash. Uh, and then nothing else really stands out to me here. This just seems like a pretty average season win delta for attackers. So I'm honestly just gonna move on to the defenders. Uh, let's go into the the PC defenders, Emerald and above. Tachanka being very, very low. And then Clash, I don't know if you can see because of the little bar here. Let me full screen this. Clash is all the way down here. Not only is she off the charts, but she's so far off the charts that they had to put her at the bottom with what her percentages were because you couldn't read them. They're that far off the charts, right? Which is absolutely insane. Uh, not only is her presence 1.3, which is in the lowest tier, but her wind delta is a negative 7.7, which shouldn't really surprise anybody. She's a pretty shit operator. Uh, and then you have other operators that are just as much surprising as Clash being there, you have Kev, super high on PC, which again, this is Emerald and above, right? So not Copper Lobbies, these are actual really good lobbies. Uh, and then Cap Cam being super high doesn't surprise anybody. Frost being high, Doc being high, Mira being high. All of these operators being kind of average doesn't surprise me. Castle being this low doesn't surprise me. As good as Castle can be, he's only good if you have a coordinated team that can play around what he's doing. Other than that, he's not that good at the solo queue environment. And then Visual being low doesn't surprise me. All of these operators are pretty much where they belong, except for like Azami and Smoke. I feel like they should have a higher wind delta but you know nothing too too crazy here uh, jaeger is still like at least 40 percent in pick rate just because he has a good gun and his utility is always going to be useful but nothing compared to the 70 percent monster he used to be right so like, pretty balanced overall i do love that rook is this high it has nothing to do with the self-revive because on pc people shoot heads so no one is able to self-revive themselves but people are just starting to play rook a lot more now because of that self-revive and people are playing the 2x mp5 and getting kills and they're realizing how good he can be right same thing with capkin ever since they buffed him people started playing him more and more because of the potential that he had and now he's just amazing right like he has such a high wind delta people are picking him all the time and you'll see he's also banned a lot too in the future let's look at the console version cap can super high on the pick rate and the wind delta even higher i'd imagine because console people aren't looking for traps as often because you have a controller to look at traps so people are swinging off of their cap can traps a lot more kind of understandable uh, clash being higher makes sense because it's a shield operator hard to deal with that on console chunky being low makes sense he's hard to use and then everything else is pretty much much the same just more expanded let me go into operator ban rate this is pc uh, attackers thatcher jackal and then dokibi no surprise here at all i mean zero surprise right dokibi's being banned all the time because she's an outstanding operator i've talked about this countless times the no ban though does surprise me never no ban guys always ban somebody even if it's somebody as stupid as like iq or like cali if you know you're not going to play them just ban somebody because you never know they could have like a cracked iq player on their team right just you never know always ban somebody uh, and then we go into the console attackers it's pretty much the the same thing except jackal and thatcher seem to switch people are banning a lot more shield operators as well right blitz monty osa a uh, fuse shield as well and then ace and ying being pretty high as well ace has a high pick rate ying is pretty hard to deal with on console so i can pretty much understand everything here as well this is where it gets kind of funky though right defender on pc mira's high valkyrie's high kate is high cab can is pretty high i'm a little surprised by that on maps like coastline and border where you can like really use his traps on like gun skill heavy maps 
I understand. But on maps like Clubhouse, where there's almost like no places you can put his cap can traps except for like the first floor, kind of weird. Clash bands make sense for the lowest, like, you know, emeralds. Uh, a zombie makes a lot of sense. This is where it gets really weird. Let's look at the console ones. Cap can is number one. Cap can is the number one most banned defender on defense in emerald and above uh, console lobbies, which is, you know, pretty surprising. And then second being Cade, which is also pretty weird. If you have Thatcher, no reason to ban Cade. If you don't have Thatcher, just bring EMPs or bring a Twitch drone or bring an IQ. Like, there, there, there's no reason to ever ban Cade unless there's specific maps that you think he's going to be really, really hard to beat. So him being above Mira is quite surprising and above Clash considering how high her win rate is compared to PC and above Thunderbird, especially considering her pick rate. Kind of weird. You don't need to sort out your bans console. Anyways, with that out of the way, that's pretty much it for the wind deltas and the operator bans. Let's go into the good stuff. So first of all, they're changing changing zero, they're making zero to where when you shoot a camera into a wall uh, that, you know, you can flip your camera through, like soft walls for instance, it makes it to where when you shoot it on there, it doesn't immediately pierce the wall so defenders can shoot it, right? It only pierces the wall whenever you flip the camera over, which just gives you way more time to get on the camera and see what you want to see, so then you can flip it and the camera pops out and you can shoot something, right? So just ease of access for zero, making him a bit stronger, I think it's very good. And then you have the reload changes called one in the chamber, this essentially is just, you can't reload cancel, right? Whenever you hear someone reloading, you to push him because you hear him reloading and you think it's a free kill reload canceling all they have to do is stop reloading and aim in their gun and then they can shoot you right so they're taking that away if you try to reload cancel you'll have one bullet left in the chamber hence the name if you hit the one bullet and you get really lucky it's cool but if not you get punished for reloading in a dangerous position which is realistic and i kind of honestly like they're also buffing the compensator they're buffing the compensator by a lot by the way like a lot that's like 20 percent more recoil control so it'd be viable to run him on like ella now him it's a compensator it's an it anyways muzzle break they increase it by 5, not too much. And then Twitch, the deceleration power increased to 14 from 5.9. So if you don't know what this means, it essentially means that she has better breaks on her drone, right? Like breaking on her drone is a lot easier. With Twitch, it is a bit weird whenever you're like moving your Twitch drone and you're trying to slow it down so you can shoot something. It does get a bit hard uh, because the deceleration power is so low, but they increased it, making it more towards like a normal drone where you could start and stop it a lot faster. Um, so it, it's just bringing more tactility. And then obviously with this new operation, you have the new attacker, Bravo. She's a three speed that has a hack drone. It's essentially a drone that you shoot at enemy gadgets and depending on the gadget it will take over that gadget as an attacker gadget or it will just destroy the gadget, right? So you could have attacker cap can traps that kill defenders or you can have maestro cameras on attack, right? So just kind of a better version of Dokibi in terms of the actual gadget. She has the para 308 which is a very very good AR. It's Capitao's AR. With the super shorty, claymores, and smoke grenades this operator is going to be an absolute menace and I think she's definitely going to be game changing. With that said, looking at win rates with Mutant Mozzie, they were pretty high. I don't know if you paid attention when I was talking about them, but it just further reinforces the fact that we're going to have to play those operators, right? We're going to have to play Mutant Mozzie. Uh, they are making a sort of anti-cheat for mouse and keyboard on console. So here's the thing. They, they've been collecting data on whether you are a mouse and keyboard player on console for like three seasons now. And instead of just banning you, they've been collecting data to see who all is doing it so they can get a better frame of reference of how to actually make this anti-cheat work, right? They could have banned everybody. That would have been too easy though because people would just make a new account and then it's the same thing, right? But if they make an input delay to where, you know, when you're using mouse and keyboard, your movements are very delayed from when you actually move your mouse and then when your character moves, it's a lot harder to deal with and because you're not banning them they still have an incentive to play on mouse and keyboard on that same account but the advantage is completely gone right now are zim makers probably just gonna get around this yeah so it is a bit useless but at least they're able to see who's on mouse and keyboard or not so they're taking a step in the right direction this is the first time any gaming company has tried anything like this so we're gonna have to give it some time but you know kickback on mouse and keyboard is pretty cool and then also console now has player protection so if you're a streamer on console you can hide your name you can have matchmaking delay pretty much everything that pc streamers have so that is pretty awesome. One really cool thing that I don't think people are mentioning enough is the fact that Bravo packs are random, right? Like when you get a Bravo pack from the battle pass, what you get out of the pack is completely random. But with this new update, that's not the case. You can go into the Bravo pack section and you can click on whatever you want to get from the Bravo packs and you get it. It's not random anymore like alpha packs are. So you can just choose what you get from Bravo packs. I think that's pretty cool. I want Monty Black Eyes and now I can just get it if I buy the battle pass. So uh, operator price decreases well. They do this almost every single year. So no surprise there. Uh, seasonal weapon skin, kind of dog general 
don't like it, whatever. Uh, and then we have obviously the changes that I talked about earlier, which is going to wrap up this video. Now there are more changes that are on the roadmap, but those changes don't come until like year eight season two, year eight season three, year eight season four. Changes like a consulate reworker coming, defender AI, tutorials, permanent arcade mode. There's a bunch of stuff coming for year eight, but I didn't want to talk about it in this video because it's not coming next season. Also, one thing I do want to say before I end the video is the mouse and keyboard change that I was talking about isn't coming on launch. It's actually coming in a mid-season patch. So when you load up the new operation and this isn't in the game, don't be surprised. It's coming with the mid-season patch. Anyways, with that out of the video, my name is Alka. Like if you feel like it, sub the channel down below if you want to get better at the game. And I'll see you in the next video. Later.